Welcome to our in-person and online service of morning prayer. My name is Kim Higginson, and along with Heather Jackson and Kathleen Aitken, I am one of the lay leaders here at Trinity Anglican Church in Durham, Ontario. Um, many thanks go to Sheila, who has put together the parish post that's going to uh, keep all the information and all the things happening here at Trinity out in front. And uh, they are, there are copies at the back, so please pick what one. And um, that's going to save me going through all the announcements because they're, they're right there. The only thing I would just like to highlight is that we've got the big Trinity yard sale coming up a week next Saturday. And uh, if you have any questions, see Martha on that. And um, also the Vacation Bible Camp is August 12th to August 16th, and it's hosted and being held at Knox United Church. And if there's any further questions on that, Robin is the point person. Did I say that right, Robin? Is that okay? All right, I got it. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? Or All right. Our service begins by recognizing both the land and the indigenous people who lived and in many situations continue to live on the land prior to Canada's colonial history. We acknowledge with respect that Bruce County and Gray County are situated on the traditional and treaty territory of the Anishinaabe, the people of the three fires known as the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations, and homeland of the Chippewas of Saugeen, the Chippewas of the Nishinaabe, and the Métis. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, and may we all, as treaty people, live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all its diverse peoples. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. And the lyrics are on a handout sheet. <laughs>
confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And now turning to page 46, we will say together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The introductory responses are found on page 47. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your grace. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. Let us join together in singing the Jubilati, the 100th Psalm, found on page 49. We will say it together, alternating at the half verse. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. taken his wife to be your wife, 
and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do these things before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our song today is song number 51, found on page 770. We'll read alternatively um, at the asterisk, verses 1 to 13, and then together the prayer found at the, um, on page 771. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blood of my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold... You look for truth deep within me. And will make me understand the wisdom of the truth. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every kind of wind and doctrine, 
by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you.
him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated.
Their ancestors who wandered in the wilderness were miraculously saved from starvation when God provided them with manna from heaven, a bread-like substance. At a more practical level, bread was a staple food that provided physical nourishment. It embodied hospitality, sharing, and communion. It also played an important role when agreements were made. Today we use a handshake or sign a document. In the ancient Jewish tradition, the sharing of bread was a sign of trust. Those wishing to enter into a pact or an agreement would break bread together to seal the deal. In last week's cottage, oh, last week's gospel at the cottage, <laughs> we heard the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. People had traveled far and wide to hear Jesus speak. They were hungry. There was a boy in the crowd who had five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus gives thanks and blesses the food, which is then distributed to the crowd. Everyone ate as much as they wanted. And the leftovers filled twelve baskets. When the crowd witnessed all that Jesus had said and done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. The setting for today's gospel reading is literally the very next day. The crowd had followed Jesus and his disciples to Capernaum on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. What is curious is that the crowd seems to have followed Jesus for the free all-you-can-eat buffet. As Jesus says to them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. And in many respects, they cannot be blamed. In those times, food was, food was limited and at times scarce. So why not follow this man called Jesus of Nazareth, who in addition to being a compelling speaker and miracle worker, filled their hungry bellies. Jesus tells the crowd that they are chasing after the wrong thing. He says, do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Jesus then makes his I am statement. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It must have been very confusing and puzzling for the crowd to hear this, let alone understand it. Just the day before, Jesus fed them with bread and fish, and the next day, he is telling them that the spiritual nourishment he provides leads to eternal life and is far more important than actual food itself. Jesus' I am declaration challenged their understanding and their beliefs. Today, we have the benefit of knowing the rest of the story. We understand that Jesus offers more than loaves and fish. We realize that he is the food that nurtures and endures forever. Jesus uses the metaphor of bread basic yet vital source of food to, re to reveal that it, it is only he who can bring fulfillment. Simply stated, bread and fish will fill our bellies, but the feeling full will be short-lived. Seeking Jesus and believing he is the true bread of life will satisfy us more abundantly and amazingly than anything earthly ever could. At the Last Supper on the night before his crucifixion, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Twice a month here at Trinity, we receive the bread of life when we receive Holy Communion, the commemoration of sacrifice, Jesus' body and the shedding of his blood for our salvation. And Jesus taught us to pray. 
pray the Lord's Prayer, where we ask, Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread being not just needs that are worldly or physical in nature, but those that are spiritual as well. When we recite the Lord's Prayer, we are acknowledging that only these gifts can come from God the Father. Believing Jesus is the bread of life requires us to nourish ourselves spiritually through worship, prayer, and reflection. It entails giving thanks to God and being grateful for our relationships, opportunities, and blessings. It requires us to share our God-given gifts of spiritual bread with others, just as Jesus fed the 5,000. I mentioned earlier that Jesus makes seven I am statements throughout the Gospel of John. This morning we delved into just one, yet each of the other six are equally rich, powerful, and filled with layers of meaning and symbolism that speak to how Jesus can play a role in our lives. Perhaps we can further reflect on the significance of Jesus' seven I am declarations and whether they have meaning in our lives by asking seven am I questions. Am I allowing Jesus to be the bread of my life? Am I living by his life? Am I letting him shepherd me? Am I looking to him as my gatekeeper? Am I consenting for him to be the way for me? Am I acknowledging his truth? Am I clinging to him as a branch on a vine? Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me 
words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 52. And together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as you're most comfortable for prayers of the people. Our litany this morning is number two, found on page 112. pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember people hanging on to life in parts of our world where there is no peace. We pray that you will give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember today the congregation of St. Mary and St. George Anglican Church in Chester. They lost their beautiful historic church the wildfire. And almost all of them lost their homes. We pray for these, your faithful people, that they will rely on your loving care and come even closer together. Also, we pray for firefighters and their families. We acknowledge that, as a people, we have misused your creation, each contributing to climate changes that are causing such devastation. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. The Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. The Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, we bring to you petitions that have been requested by the people of Trinity Durham. With living hope, we pray for Becky, Jeannie, Abby, Icy, Alicia, Vivian, Steve, Sherry, Patricia, Gary, Debbie. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. Looking to you for strength and guidance, 
May we each mirror your compassion and love, so that together with all faithful people, we will show your light to the world. Amen.
face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord.